Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, guys, how's it going? So, yeah, this is going to be uh, pretty much a ranting video because uh, wasted, I don't know, good two fucking hours, maybe even closer to three hours that I could have been on the road, you know, doing what I got to fucking do, but instead I got to fucking go through a mountain work of fucking paperwork and then fucking money. So, what's the problem? Well, I was at I was at the farm. I got a little bit of gas today and went to the farm, put some gas in the little tractor because it was pretty much full, but it could have used a couple more gallons. So that's what I threw in there with a couple of gallons, and uh, she's nice and full, ready for the next thing she's got to do now. Um. But anyways, I was, at the, I was at the farm doing stuff and then went in to talk to my grandma and then the phone rang over there. I was like, oh, well, maybe it's the young guy calling because we were going to try to haul some hay today because they're threatening more rain and we need more hay. So <clears throat> sure enough, we, we made one trip um, earlier today and then I had to stay home because I was waiting for fucking phone calls. I never got one phone call. Um, like I said, I'll get into it. But I see in the meantime, my uncle hauled a couple more. Um, so we got a... Well, actually, no, we got a total... Well, there's... Yeah, there's two... Yeah, there's two in the yard now and then there's one that we just put out. So I guess that would only be about three, but... You know, you get about four or five days out of these bales, and now with the green grass grown, it'll they're gonna eat less of that and more of the green stuff. So, but it's time that I could have could have went and you know did something else. But no, I had to. Uh, uh, like I said, my the phone rang at the farm. We thought it was the young guy here. It was mother calling and saying that she thinks that one of my cats was dying. He was sleeping, he woke up from his nap, he ran to the kitty litter, I don't know what, I mean, I guess, I don't know, but, ran to the kitty litter, to the kitty litter like a bat out of hell, you know, did his business, and then after he did a little bit of his business, he was extremely wobbly, very dizzy, um, I think he had like a temporary I don't know what you want to call it it's like a memory loss it's like he didn't even know where the hell he was at so we thought okay well there's something wrong internally um, we don't know if we I mean we don't know I mean it could have been a number of things you know he is he is a, he well he is an older cat but he is still a little bit younger than the rest of the of the cats that I have so technically he would be the last cat to probably go if you know if it came down to that he'd be the last cat to go so because that's just how much younger he is so but unfortunately you know it happened at a, such a crappy time of the day where you try to get a get a hold of a vet you know to squeeze him in nobody wants to take them they all the first thing that comes out of your mouth well they're saying okay well by the time you get here it's going to be after hours we close at five and or whatever and like you know then there's this one fucking vet that we deal with i think we've dealt with them before um if they have to do an after hour you know thing to these cat you know to the cat they want 350 fucking dollars because I had to bring them in after hours. It's not, I can't help it when my cat decides, hey, it's time for me to, you know, die or have a stroke or something. I can't control what my cats fucking do, you know? So when cats go on the blink, you know, you have to take them in, you know? But the first fucking thing on their mind is money. They're like, oh, well, if you want to bring them in right now, you can, but then it's going to charge you $350 and we want it up front and we want it right here and now. 
And that's just money I don't have. You know, so... And then you look at the at the other vets, you know, like down in the cities, they have an after-hour charge too, but they only want like a hundred and something, you know, and here they want 300. Are you fucking, are you, are you mad? You know, like that's insane. So, and then we try calling another vet. Um, well, actually we tried calling our main vet and they were all booked up. They can't take in any more animals because they're already maxed out. Well, I, I don't, I have no words for that, you know. So, we've been trying to call other, other vets, you know, and there's only so many within the area. And they all close at fucking five, which I think is, you know. Anyway, it's kind of stupid, but it's understandable too. They only have to work so many hours, but, you know, to charge somebody an after hour fee is just ridiculous especially of three hundred dollars i could see it maybe being 50 bucks or maybe even a hundred bucks but not 300 and then on top of that then you're going to have whatever it costs to fix the cat because who knows what kind of internal problems he has you know so then you got probably x-rays you know to figure out what's wrong um taking blood so they can run blood tests like that all costs money you know so by the time you're done you know to get one cat checked out and to see what's wrong with him and see if it's even fixable you're probably talking a thousand bucks already to just get a cat checked out and to maybe get it fixed if it can get fixed and i don't mean fixed like and it can't breed i mean fix and as you know fix its health you know to make it to make it better again you know and, and and all they do is just sit there and they freaking argue and, and they're like, oh, well, you know, you got to do this and do that. Call the other vet. Well, we've already called all those vets. I hate that fucking runaround bullshit, you know? So, I don't know. It's just, it's frustrating. You know, that I can't, like, I understand that, you know, you, you need money to do this kind of stuff. But the problem is that my main vet, the one that we always had went to, even that that will even work on our cattle, they will take monthly payments. Like they, I mean, they're not happy about it, but they are willing to work with you. Whereas the other ones, they will put up a stink about it. You know, they might do it or they may not do it. Most of the time, they're not going to. So, but, you know, it's just like, we cannot be planned for this stuff, you know. So, yeah, we're not going to have money sitting around. We're not going to have a thousand bucks just floating around in case the one cat decides to, just, you know. Like, I, I feel like, like, the way things are going, you know, the cats are not even worth it anymore. Like, I don't think any animal's worth it. I can tell you right now, after these, this set of cats are dead and gone, I don't think I want any cats. I thought about maybe after all of these cats die off, you know, from age or whatever, right? That I'd maybe go get one more or maybe two more. Maybe I'd go to a local uh, animal shelter, you know, and rescue a couple of cats there, you know, have, have a couple of cats. Have a manageable level amount of cats instead of this many. I got way too many cats, but, you know, that's because the two girls that we had, they got pregnant and we were not you know we weren't at the time we didn't have the money to get them fixed but we were doing everything that we could to avoid them from getting pregnant and they still got pregnant anyway and then of course then there's people that are fucking dumping their cats off in town and they wander over to my place i've had two i exactly i want to say that i've only had two cats that were wild well, they're not even wild because they were they, they were just so tame. But they came right up to me and, you know, and they were friendly. So I was like, well, I might as well take them then. And they're, they're friendly. So I had a black cat. Uh, we've had him for quite a few years. He was a stray. Just come out of fucking nowhere. Super friendly. Um, 
I think we had, I think we did get him fixed about a year after that we ad adopted him, you could say. So we got him fixed so he couldn't breed with other cats and wouldn't fight with the males. And he lasted for quite a few years. Well, he died, uh, I think it was last year or the year before. Um, he died. Of what, we don't know because it was like one day he's fine. And then the next day he's dead. So it's like, you know. Now it would have been nice to have known what caused him to die. But again, that would cost big money. You know. So we never we never did it. We just, we just buried him and called it a, a day, you know. So, but then the neighbors that live next to me, they're fucking letting their cats run wild. I technically adopted one of theirs so he's living with me now he's a male so he has to have he's not quite old enough yet but he will be pretty soon here um, to get his nuts cut off so he can't breed fight and piss everywhere but it's not my cat it's the neighbor's cat but yet the neighbors don't seem to care about him all that much you know so um that's most likely going to be another cat now that I adopted. And I'm getting kind of sick of it. Like, I mean, I, I, I mean, I like cats, but I didn't realize, I mean, it, it wasn't even a problem a few years ago. You know, it's like now all of a sudden everybody's fucking money hungry. I don't know if they've been getting ripped off and they're fighting with other you know, customers and stuff, and now they're putting a tighter squeeze on how this gets put in, into play now. But really, when when we consider it a emergency, which we did because we didn't know what the fuck was going on at the time, um, they still didn't want to do nothing about it. The first thing that out of their mouth was money. Man, money should be the, the the last thing that's on your mind, you know. Like, I understand that you know, you're worried about getting paid, but, you know, it's just, it should not be a priority. We'll worry about the money after the fact, you know. So, because I don't really like the idea of if he is dying for whatever reason, you know, well... This could have, maybe could have been avoided if I could have just gotten him in, you know, instead of sitting here playing with my dick, you know, waiting. I, that's another thing, too. I called the vet, that second one, and she said, okay, well, I'll call you back when I get some more information from the main person, I guess, that does whatever the fuck over there. Never called me back. So that got me irate. Um, like, that's unprofessional. I understand that maybe you have other emergencies going on. Maybe there's cattle issues and other issues going on. But you don't just... Two hours went by. And not one person could take three minutes out of their time to discuss something. So... I just, I, I don't know. But, and then, well, for my main vet, we'll go back to him again. They said that they could get him in, but it would be a week from now. Well, he could be dead tomorrow. So what good does that fucking do me? You know. And then the other vet, the one that we're fighting about with, you know, they're all worried about fucking money, of course. They uh, basically said that they had a program out that was meant for people that don't have money, you know, to get their animal fixed. Like, like it's a it's a donation place where people can donate their money to help people that are less fortunate to have money. But get this, it's basically a form. You have to fill out a form, and you may or may not get approved. So we're sitting here irritated because we're like, well, 
how long is this going to take to fill out a fucking form online, which we shouldn't have to do when there is a, clearly a emergency going on. And then if you get, you know, if you don't get approved, well, then you don't get approved. And then you basically sit there and let you just watch your cat die. You know, like it's dirty business is what it is. They don't care. You know, they make plenty of money. I know that they do, so money should be the, the least of their concerns. But I understand, too, if maybe you've been ripped off by other people. But that doesn't really give you the right to fuck over everybody else, too. And when they don't have the money right up front, you know, basically, they tell you to go fuck yourself at that point. It's like, you know, I can't control when my cats decide to croak and or have health problems, you know. So, so, and there's there's going to be a rainstorm moving in here in probably about an hour. It's already seven o'clock. I could have already been home if they just would have said, "Come on in, we'll take a look at them." Yada yada yada, and then we'll discuss the money shit later on. You know, so. I just, I can't believe it, you know. It's like even having, even having pets is not worth it. You know, I'm more of a cat person. My sister's more into dogs. She had a couple of dogs. Um, but then they died. And I think, actually, I think she's got a cat now. Um, but that's because her kids wanted it. So they have a cat. So. But. I mean everybody's into a certain animal. Some people are even t are into turtles. Okay that's fine. You're into whatever. But you know. What if that turtle gets sick? What if he breaks his leg? You know. You have nobody to call. To fix that turtle's leg. And if you read the Google reviews on Google, which you can do it on your phone, if you just go to google.com and find whatever you're looking for. If you're looking for a vet, you want to read the reviews on that, you can do that. So I've been reading the reviews of my, this, well, all of these vets that I've been trying to get a hold of. And there's one that said that they're not taking any new clients I didn't know that there that you had a limitation on clients. That's kind of ridiculous. And two, a guy was denied. You know, well, again, because they didn't want to take a client, but he brought in his kitten. At emergency, by the way, because the kitten had broke its leg. Okay, he took it to the vet. They said nope because we're not taking any more clients. Again, you're limited to clients. So, if you're not a new client, or I mean, if you are a new client, then they're going to deny you because you don't have the room. Well, that, that's that's ridiculous. I don't think there's a limitation on how many people you can have. I think you're just you could just. I mean, you're supposed to just. I mean, it's not like these animals are staying in your freaking hospital or whatever you want to call it for years. They're only there for as long as they need to be. It's the same with people. You know. Every time I've gone to the hospital. Every time my grandmother's gone to the hospital. Every time my mother's gone to the hospital. They only want you there. To get fixed. They want to monitor you. And then when you are A-OK -okay to leave. They kick your ass out the door. They don't want you staying in there. Any more than is necessary. It's the same way with vets too. You're only going to keep the animal. For so long. Because you have another animal. That could be in that place. So. <clears throat> this is ridiculous. And I thought you know. Like. <sighs> this is just another problem. On top of, of another problem. That I'm dealing with today. You know. It's like I got two problems. One is for me. One is. Well I mean they're both. For me, I guess you could say, because the cat is mine too. But one is for me, myself, 
and another one is for my cat. <laughs> it's like, holy fuck. So, I mean, it's just ridiculous that you can't even call a local vet. They're either booked up or they're not taking new clients. And then they ask if you if you've been with them before. Apparently, I guess you if you go there, you automatically have an account with these people, and then they keep you on record. So then, if they you do business with them again in the future, well, then they know who you are. Which I mean, in a way, that's okay, you know. But I don't care if I have an account with these people or not. It's not. I don't care. But. For fuck's sake, all I want to do is bring my cat in, have him looked at to make sure that it's something that can be fixed easily. And, you know, then if it can't be fixed, well, then we have to make the, the decision. Do we let him suffer for the remaining days that he'll be alive? Or do we just, you know, do we just put him down? And if that's the case, I might just put him down. I mean, why even let him suffer for another week or two that he might survive? If, if you know that his days are limited, you might as well just end it early so then he doesn't have to be in pain. So, but I don't know. I can't get anything done with my cat because nobody will take him. And it's so irritating. You know, I'm just done. I'm just done. I'll keep whatever cats I have and I just pray that they'll stay healthy as long as they possibly can. And if one of them gets sick or or even worse, injured, well, if it comes down to being injured, I might just take matters into my own hands. Because what's the point of trying to call a fucking vet? You can't get nothing done about it anyway. You know? Like, why even waste your fucking time? Let's just, just move on and, and just put them, put them down and bury them. And then just move on. You know, and, and seeing a dying cat or having a cat die on me, it's nothing new because this has been going on for years. <clears throat> you know, if, if you've been, if, you, if you've had cats your whole entire life and they've died on you. And then if you have, if you've had cattle, like I do, I have cows and you've seen a calf die. Or a dead one or whatever, you know. And it's like you kind of just get numb to it. You know, like if, if you're new to it or if you're a kid, this could be kind of a sad thing. But to somebody like me that's been around so many dead animals, it's it's really just like second nature to me. It, it doesn't bother me anymore. It's just, you know, I don't, I don't get sad about it. To me, it's just like, ah, whatever. You know. Because it, because it happens so much, you know. But you kind of just get numb to it, you know. But if I can help my cat, you know, and, and give him the proper care that he needs, you know, to extend his life even another five years or maybe even longer, you know, it'd be worth it. So... But then, but then it's also kind of sad too. Um, trying to remember what vet it was. I'm pretty sure it was one of these that I that I was dealing with. There was a guy that was taking his dog there, and he's been doing it for years. That, that same dog, for years. And he decided to take his dog to another veterinarian down in the cities, which would be an hour south from here, just as you know, to see how they were doing and maybe see if they could find. Something wrong with the dog. Well, come to find out, they did. The vets down in the city found that the, that the dog had some kind of an ear infection. And the dog had it for years. For years. But the vets here never caught it. Unfucking real. That that's that's disturbing when when you don't even know it's a fucking ear infection of some kind. You know, it, it really shows that, that you're lacking in either training or you're just not giving a shit. You know. 
And ever since our 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 main vet guy died, this was quite a few years ago that he died. He got killed in a car accident. He was the best motherfucker around. He knew everything from cats to cows, turkey or well, fuck turkeys even. He knew it all. You brought him a kitten with a cold, and he'd tell you it's the freaking. You know, it was the coronavirus. You know, like, he just knew. He knew everything. So it, it really put a hurting on us when he died. Because I'm pretty sure he was the one that worked on our cow when she wouldn't calf. And she, w she wouldn't push the calf out of her. And we were forced to cut the cow open to try to save the calf. Well, the calf was already dead anyway, and she ended up dying shortly after anyway. And I'm pretty sure it was him and one of his helpers that was doing that. But he he told us that there's a high possibility that she's not going to survive. And he was right. Now, that's another, that's another thing, too, is that he was an older guy. But that's the thing, though, is that he's been doing this for so many fucking years that when you become an old-timer, you're a fucking genius. You are the smartest motherfucker on this planet. It knows what to do with animals. But when you're like a 20-year-old or a 30-year-old, you're still in your learning stages of becoming any type of fucking veterinarian. I don't care if you've gone to school or fucking not. You, you, There's still so many things that you have to learn. And unfortunately, a lot of that comes by trial, you know, trial by error. But, you know, yeah, starting to rain. But yeah, it's, it's fucking sad, you know. I mean, I'm going to have to, I don't know if I should move or not. I think I want to get out of this field. Because if this field gets wet, it's going to get rutted up real fast. So I'm going to have to get out of here. At least move on to the other field that's a little bit harder. Because this one is soft still. So... But yeah, I'm just, I'm just fucking disappointed in these fucking vets. I mean, if you look at the reviews for all of them, they've all been shitty. They all have shitty reviews, you know, but I mean, I just, I can't believe it. The fucking, the shit that I have to go through. And I thought my shit was bad enough. Well, now I, it's dealing with the fucking cat bullshit has just doubled it. So, and if you want to know what's going on with me, well, I have to get a refill of pills because I take pills twice a day. Probably doing that until the day I die. But I have to see a doctor at least once a year, you know, to get my prescription redone. Well, I don't know, and the, the fucking, the one doctor I was seeing, she didn't want to come around anymore, so I had to find a new one, and, well, I did, I found a new one, and she actually seems like she knows what the fuck she's doing, so that's not a problem there, but the problem is, is that, they, well, like, what started it is that, they keep changing my schedule. I was originally scheduled to come in in sometime in July. I don't remember the date, but it was July that I was supposed to come in, see my doctor, get the okay, you know, and get a, a piece of paper saying, yep, you're good for another full year. Um, well, apparently, my first doctor, I don't, know, I don't know why we're fucking still under here, because we're not. I got a totally different doctor now. So, but for some reason, I'm still with the with this first doctor, the first girl, and she apparently didn't put out the prescription saying that I need that I that I need a, need a refill. But the problem is, is that they keep moving it. So now they have me. Um, scheduled to come in 
in the fall. Now the thing is, is I only have enough pills to last me until July. That's when my prescription expires and I have to have a new one. Well, doctors can get around that. They can make up like a temporary thing to get you by until your visit. Okay, well, I was already scheduled to come in in July to do this and do that. So, but then they changed it and said, well, we don't want you to come in until fall. Okay, understandable. They forgot to put the card in to say, hey, this guy's going to need refills, you know, in the meantime. He's going to need a temporary thing so he can get more pills to last him until the next ap appointment. I got some real raindrops falling. So, but they, I guess apparently she didn't do it. So I called in this morning to put in um, my my pill uh, for this month. And, or whatever the fuck it was, I can't remember. But then she said that the girl at the pharmacy said, oh, well, you don't have any. You're out. Because it's, I mean, it's all just confusing as shit. But, and it's like, well, I don't know. My doctor was supposed to, you know, give you a temporary thing to say, hey, give him more refills to last him until, you know, the end of summer or the fall time. And I don't know. It's just a fucking mess. So, I don't know. Nobody's fucking talking to each other. That's the problem. And this is like the third time now they've changed my appointment. I know that last year they actually got me in, I think, a week earlier than what I was actually scheduled for. So I guess somebody must have pulled the plug on their appointment and said, nope, I'm out of here. So then they decided to call me and be like, hey, do you want to take this instead and we can get you in a little bit earlier and you can, you know, you know, just get it done and over with. I was like, okay, well, that's fine. But, but you know, but to change it to later on now, to later on in the year, and then not give me enough refills to last me until that appointment. It's just ridiculous. It's like, well, I'm sitting here talking to the, to the nurses. Because you don't ever really talk to the doctor unless you're actually there. Which is stupid. Because you talk to her for like maybe five minutes. And then she just has you do a couple a couple tests, you know. And then, and then she asks you a couple questions. And then she's like, here you go. Personally, I think it's a waste of freaking time. Yeah, they want to see you in person, but fuck, you're only there for five minutes. But then you spend half an hour in the goddamn waiting room. So. But I'm just, I'm just so tired of it, you know, because it's, it's just like. I mean, I don't know. It's just, you know. Maybe I have things planned already. Like, you know, some people, they, they, they will plan out their whole entire year. You know, and of course, there are going to be some surprises, of course, along the way. But people always, some people anyway, they like to try to plan out their whole entire year. So that includes your doctor appointments. So once you schedule a doctor appointment, you know, and you think, okay, that's set. They're not going to change it. Well, then you plan everything else around that. You do everything else, right? You, you plan for you plan to mow your lawn on a certain day, and you plan to cut hay on a certain day, and you plan to, you know, make out with your girlfriend on a certain day. Like you plan all this stuff out, and then, then a week before your actual doctor appointment, they call you, say, "Hey, do you want to come in on this day? And let's get it done." Okay, well maybe that's the day I've decided to mow my fucking lawn. You know, it's like I'm using all this stuff as an example. You have things planned out and you have to change those plans because of this and this and this. You know, and it's just, in all reality, some, some plans 
cannot be changed because maybe they are also a set on a schedule. Like you have an appointment, you know, it's like freaking common sense would tell you that. But I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's this fucking hospital that I'm going to, cause I'm going to the one over in North Dakota. Um, because I always thought they were a little bit better than the one over here. But I don't know. I'm really starting to question that now too. But I'm getting so sick and tired of having to change my fucking plans every goddamn time I turn around. It's just like leave them the frick alone. You know, and then sometimes I think, like I said, doctors will change their appointments. Um, or their schedules, you know, because like maybe on a certain day they found out there's only going to be one person there for the whole entire day. So what they will either do is try to move you to a day where they can actually fill it. And then that day where they have no appointments, you know, they could just take that day off from work. You know, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. There's only you only had one person on that on that one day, and you decided to, to move mine just so you could take that day off. You know, that's not what we agreed to. We agreed to that day anyway. You know, to have for me to come in and, and you know do this and do that. It's like I don't care if you only have if I'm your only freaking patient for the day. Don't change it. You know, so. I just, I just don't know anymore. It's just getting to be ridiculous. And then the, the fucking nurse, you know, at the hospital there, she's like, oh, well, do you want to call? Because I have to call down into the cities because that's where my doctor is from. My new doctor. Both of my doctors have always been from the cities because they travel. They, they can travel up here. Some of them do, not all of them, but some do. A couple of them did anyway. And. <clears throat> They can, what the hell was I going with that now? Well, they can, I don't know. I don't know where the fuck I was going with that now. It's ridiculous. I'm just, I'm just so freaking irritated that I can't even think right. So, but you can, you can see the frustration in my voice. It's just, you know, if it ain't one thing, then it's another. And, <clears throat> you know, well, yeah. The thing is, I guess what I was going to say is that when I was talking to the to the nurse, okay, no, I think I was talking to the nurse here, that where my doctor would go to, where I have my appointment scheduled. So I was talking to her, and she said, "Okay, well, you'd have to call the city hospital and then talk to them." Okay, so I've done this. I've done this in the past. When you talk to them, they say, no, 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 you got to talk to the hospital where your appointment is actually scheduled at. I'm just getting the fucking runaround. It's like nobody talks to each other. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. It's like, do you even know what day of the week it is? Do you know what time it is? Do you know if you're married or are you divorced? Do you got kids? Do you even know any of that? Like, holy fuck. It's like, do you even know what the hell's going on? Because it's mind blowing. So I said, no, I'm not calling the fucking hospital because I did that last year and they said to call you. And I, and I said, I'm not wasting any more time on that. So I just, I just said, you know, you guys need to get your ass in the shape and you guys need to straighten out your act and, and, and get this shit figured out. And you know, just get it fucking figured out. Quit wasting my time. Quit telling me to fucking do it. You're doing it's their job anyway. You know. But I'm just so sick of it, man. It's ridiculous. And it's every fucking time too. It's like I hey, you want to come in a week earlier? Hey, this year we're gonna make it so you can come in t you know, like fucking three months later. It's like I was scheduled to come in in July. You know, like it's getting annoying. I'm getting sick and tired of having to change shit. You know, 
in June it would have been okay, you know, to have a doctor appointment because I'm not really doing anything at that time. Calving probably would have just would have been kind of on the start, but nobody would have been actually officially calving. You know, it's just it's the window of when to start watching for it. But they, they might calf a little bit later this year, probably not until July. Given that the bulls here a little bit longer and you know whatever else, so who knows when they exactly got bred, but. <clears throat> You got a rough idea anyway, because we got one of those cards. So, I don't have one, but my grandma does. And she looks at that and gives her a rough idea when they when they might start calving. So. <clears throat> but. I don't know. It's really just getting to be fucking irritating. Everything I have to do in life is a fight. And I've already, I've already told mother that if they, uh, if they, uh, do this shit to me one more freaking time, I think I'm just going to be done. Um, I don't have to take medication from the health problem that I have. I mean, you're, it's not like, you know, mandatory, but... You know, it's just, I don't know, it's just ridiculous. So, um, so I even told mother too, it's like, well, if it gets to the point where nobody knows what the fuck is going on, nobody will talk to each other, you know, this and that and this and that, I'm just going to be done. Maybe I'll start smoking pot. I don't know, because you know what, I heard that pot can do the same damn thing as what my medication does to me. So, and here in Minnesota, it's legal. They made it legal here, so I can smoke all the pot I want, and I'm legal. So, you know, it's like, you know, and what's so stupid, too, is, is that the doctors always tell you, oh, well, you need to be stress-free, you know, and you need to lose some weight, you know, like if you happen to be a little bit overweight. I could just get rid of you, and there's 99% of my stress gone already. You know, it's because they pull shit like this, you know, it's like, oh, we're just going to fuck with you all day long. We're going to shove medication on you that's supposed to help take care of your problems. But yet you're the one causing them anyway. It's, it's just stupid. You know. It's like, just quit freaking jerking me around and just leave my shit alone. And, and the fucking vets, they need to quit being crybabies about money and... You know, get stuff done. So, fortunately, I don't know um, if my cat will survive or not. I have no clue because they refuse to take them. So, they said the only way they could take them is if I brought $350 down with me. You know, and that's really just, just, just an after hour charge fee. Why 300 when the other fucking vet only charges like 100 and something, you know? It's like, you could be a little lot cheaper than that. No wonder why people don't want to do business with you. No wonder why you get the shitty reviews. You know? When does the common sense click in and, and tell you, like, hey, yeah, this isn't right? Like, I understand you got fucking money to make and shit, but goddamn. That's not your job to become rich. Your job is to you know, save animals' lives. Animals' lives, you know? That's that's the point of this fucking vet shit, you know? Your job is to save animals and make them healthy. That should be your greatest reward, is to know that, that you saved an animal's life. But now, it's just money this, money that. Yeah, we don't want to see you unless you got 300 bucks for an after-hour charge. And then they said that, well... You can come down, you know, or we can schedule you an appointment and you can come in next week. I shouldn't have to schedule an appointment. I don't know why I have to do that. Especially when it's considered a fucking emergency. I should be able just to call you and say, hey, I'm coming. You know. 
that's what it was just a few years ago too i all i had to do was call them like hey i have to come in i got a sick or dying animal i need you guys to look at it and see what you think you know and it's like okay at that time it was just you have to come on down we'll discuss the paperwork and shit later on now it's the total opposite let's talk about paperwork and money before we decide to work on your animal that shows what's uh what's important for you guys that all you guys truly care about is fucking money and everybody wonders why i'm under i'm so crabby and i'm under stress and and yada fucking yeah it's because of this stupid shit that i gotta put up with on a fucking daily basis you got the fucking doctors over there telling you to go fuck yourself but they're changing your fucking appointments on you all left all the time and then you got the veterinaries that basically tell you to go fuck yourself too they don't want to see you unless you got money the other one won't see me because they're all booked up for another week it's like holy shit and then, and then you and then you read the fucking reviews man are some of them fucking sad to read you know it's like like that one the guy had to have his dog put down or whatever the fuck it was and I don't know if they wanted to charge him something for that or whatever I don't know but then they wanted it to be at a time like I guess it would be like after hours that they would do it I think it was so they could bring the family together and have their last goodbye with the dog and I don't know what happened but the vets went and put the dog to sleep when the parent stepped out to make the phone call they just immediately went and did it it's like you don't do that that's just that's just disrespectful you know when a family member says well I, you know we need to schedule for after hours you know so then th that way the family can be together you know like and then they they have to step out to make the phone call you know and then you just go behind the owner's back and you say let's just get it done you know like you might as well just have stabbed the dog with a fucking knife and you might as well just have stabbed the family members with the knife because that's what you're doing to them when you pull a stunt like that you know like it's stupid and then there was another comment that was left on there I kind of missed it too but it was about that kitten um the guy had left a review and saying you know like well we can't bring your cat we can't fix your cat because of whatever 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 right right well the guy left a smart ass comment underneath his his review saying maybe i should break her leg and just see how fast she wants help because when it comes to people it's right now but then when it comes to animals maybe next week even though the cat is probably on already borrowed time it's just like well whatever it's a huge fucking disrespect it's disrespectful towards the owners you know it's you know you're ruining cats you're ruining everybody's lives that's what i should say and then you got shitty business and yet these businesses are still in business you know and then there was another one too um forgot that somebody left a because uh, there is well for that one anyway they have after hour uh, they have a uh, after hour emergency number that you can call okay well you don't actually call it you leave them a message and they get back to you well for that girl that had a, an after hour emergency she called left a message they never called back that was a huge mistake on their end why have it if you're not going to check it? I don't know. I can tell you what. After my cats are dead and gone, I'm done. I was thinking maybe get a couple more after they were gone. You know, maybe go to a, an animal shelter and take a couple. I honestly don't think I want to now. Because if I'm not going to be able to give them the care that they need, what's the point of having them? You know... I can't give them the care that, that they need. I can't give them the proper care. 
So it's really just just a big fucking slap to the face. So I think I'm done. And I'm and I'm also about to be done with my doctor too. I'm just really about to be done with her. I really just want to slap my. I just want to reach across the damn the desk and slap my fucking doctor right in the face and the nurses. Slap them all in the face. And be like you suck. I wouldn't recommend you if you were the last person on this planet. I just, I just can't. It's, it's fucking mind blowing. So, and this whole fucking time I was at home waiting for the vet to call, I could have been out with my uncle grabbing some round bales. My grandma likes me to go with. Um, because I have a cell phone. My uncle doesn't have one and if the pickup should break down, well then I can at least call grandma or mother and call for a rescue, you know. So, my, my uncle had to go out by himself um, to grab those two bales, it looks like, by himself. And that's kind of a high risk. So, but I had to stay home because I didn't know when the stinking vet was going to call. I will kind of find out the bitch never called back anyway. You know, Jesus Christ. I'm just done. I'm just fucking done with everybody. I want everybody to go to fucking hell. I want everybody to go hang themselves in a fucking tree. You know, yes, I'm being very dark right now. They need to. I want the vet places to burn the fuck down. I want... The hospital to fucking burn down. Like, it's just... There's only so much of this you can take before you will just finally snap and lose your fucking cool. And I am finally getting to that, to that fucking point now where I'm just about to snap. So... You know, it's not worth it. It's not worth the struggle and the fight. You know... It's just, it's just not worth it anymore. I'll just pray that my cats, you know, have the best, healthiest life that they can have. I'll give them what I can get, you know, for like flea medicine and stuff like that. But if they have any any internal problems or if they break a leg, I'll just have to put them to sleep myself. Because there's, there's going to be no sense in calling the vet. Because they, they're either going to be booked up or they're not going to take you unless you have money. And that's a huge problem for those that don't have money to begin with, you know. Because I'm not the only fucking person in this world that doesn't have the kind of money that they want. So. But guys, that's pretty much all it. I'm just done fucking ranting. I'm going to go in and I guess have something to eat and uh, call her a day. So. Because that's all I can do. There's no, no sense of doing anything else. Won't be going on the highway now. So, I don't know. It fucking is what it is, I guess. So, <clears throat> but yeah. Thanks, guys. I guess I'm taking off. So, I guess I have a good day and stuff and stuff. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Take her easy.